traditional about these things. Really? Why the changes in departure dates, by the way? Ours is not to reason why, Captain. In the Navy, the owner's decision is final. I thought we were registered as a merchant ship. Ah, oh, gentlemen. This is Captain Oates of the six Inniskillen Dragoons. I see horses. Mr. Cherry Garrard. How do you do? Hello. Mr. Gran. How do you do? Hello. Where will the ponies be housed? We have to get to New Zealand first, Oates. Then we can start worrying about the ponies. Well, make yourself at home. I'll tell Captain Scott you're here. I'm the other paying guest. Friends call me Cherry. Titus, Napoleon, Farmer Hayseed, Lawrence. Take your pick. Seated, gentlemen, please. Definitely three miles on this one. That one's just under. I'll have to look up in the book. Here we go. Aye, aye, sir. Yeah. Ah! Oh, him down! He's too good. Sure is. He's ready. He's ready. Oh, Come on, oh, Blake. Bill, get a good tackle in. Get up. Yes! True. Of hopeful signs for the future, none are more remarkable than the health and spirit of our people. It would be impossible to imagine a more vigorous community and there does not seem to be a single weak spot in the 12 good men and true I've chosen for the southern advance. All are now experienced sledge travelers, knit together with a bond of friendship that has never been equaled under such circumstances. As for myself, I find it exceedingly difficult to settle down to solid work just at present and keep putting off the tasks which I have set myself. What you got there, Tom? None at all. Perhaps it has something to do with intelligence. Do you mean, Titus? I don't know. Maybe greys are more stupid than blacks or chestnuts. I mean, if you were a horse out here, Bill, belly deep in snow, lugging a damn great load behind you. <laughs> mother. That is, if Scott and I don't fall out. It will be pretty tough having four months of him. 
Where's the fourth hatch? Evans came back a three-man party. Five went on. What? My God. Cherry? Did you ever take that navigation course we talked about in the winter? I'm afraid not, Hatch. The owner said I'd be wasting my time. I can navigate and drive, Dog Hatch. You're giving the orders. But until Uncle Bill gets back, I might see science and running a dozen different experiments, practically single-handed. End of the day, who knows? Science may be the only thing we have to take back with us. It's touch and go, though, Teddy, though. My duty as a surgeon is clear. It means one of you two is going to have to do the dog run with Dimitri. Bad orders. No good. Get to one ton depot as fast as possible and leave the food there. But if Scott isn't there, judge for myself what to do. Is that it? Well, it's all very confusing. Yes, I'm sorry it's a jumble, old chap. The orders the captain sent back with the returning parties do tend to contradict each other. But don't forget. Scott says he's in no way dependent on the dogs for his return. The main thing is not to risk the dogs for next season. All three sets of instructions stress that. You'll be all right. Dimitri will look after you. I just wish I knew how to drive dog. Is. I don't know what to do for the best. I believe it may be Cleary. It's 60 miles from here to the depot at Mount Hooper. 190 from there to base. If we go on, we run the risk of simply missing them on the march, and then they'll arrive here and find the depot unreplenished. In any case, we only have surplus food rations for two days. It's not enough to get us there and back again. On the other hand, in the remote possibility they're already experiencing some difficulty. Go Mount Hooper, mister. Easy, you know how. Tell me. Duck eat duck, mister. To home? Yes, mister. Uh, yes, I suppose so. and oblige the limits of stuff transported to be narrowed. Two, the weather throughout the outward journey, and especially the long gale in 83 degrees, stopped us. 